the gorilla is not the strongest primate that ever existed. As human beings, we have a natural curiosity and fascination with the world of primates, chiefly because we are primates ourselves. Today, the gorilla is widely accepted as the biggest and strongest member of this ancient group. But is it the mightiest primate of all time? Well, according to fossil evidence and even modern hearsay, no. With that in mind, we've decided to dig deep to uncover the secrets of another, larger, and stronger primate, Gigantopithecus. We'll be looking at what this animal might have looked like, where it lived, how it might have died, and how it would stack up against mighty modern gorillas. Enjoy! What is Gigantopithecus? Gigantopithecus is, or was, a great ape from China. It's extinct now, of course, and all we have is very little fossil evidence that kind of proves its existence. These fossils include four jawbones and over a thousand teeth, which isn't much, but they are still a decent starting point for reconstructions and educated estimations. Scientists classify this seemingly prehistoric creature as a great ape, which means it is in the hominidae family, alongside orangutans, chimpanzees, gorillas, and, of course, humans. Gigantopithecus is further classified within the extinct hominid tribe Civipithecini. But this particular classification has been revisited and questioned in recent years. The word Gigantopithecus itself is the animal's taxonomic genus. Only one species is recognized at the moment, and its full scientific name is Gigantopithecus blackeye. Folks have been unearthing Gigantopithecus fossils since the 1930s. But neck-down skeletons have proven frustratingly elusive. Naturally, the wide void of fossil evidence has led to a wide range of speculation about what the creatures looked like and how they lived. One of the earliest speculations was that Gigantopithecus was a member of the Homininni tribe, which is home to humans, chimps, and bonobos. A later speculation linked Gigantopithecus closer to gorillas mainly because of the scale of the teeth and jaws. The molars, for instance, are the biggest of any ape ever documented. However, in recent times, primatologists are convinced that Gigantopithecus was most closely related to orangutans than any other hominid. Not only do the jaws and teeth closely resemble those of orangutans, but Gigantopithecus's home range overlaps with the orangutan's native domain. The name Gigantopithecus comes from the German-Dutch paleontologist Ralph von Kienigswald, who was amazed by the size of the creature's molar teeth. The species name, Black Eye, is in commemoration of the Canadian paleoanthropologist Davidson Black, who conducted extensive human evolution research in China. Interestingly, von Kienigswald stumbled upon the gigantic teeth in a Hong Kong drugstore where they were being marketed as medicinal dragon bones in 1935. Unfortunately, thanks to inhibiting factors like the Second World War, the teeth's true source would not be identified until 1952. In 1956, the first on-site fossils were found in a cave in the Nyusui Mountains in Guangxi, China. Today, this cave is known as Gigantopithecus Cave. In the same year, a farmer in Liu Cheng discovered the first jawbone and a bunch of other teeth. This led to the Chinese Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology and Paleoanthropology digging further in the area and discovering two more jawbones and more than 1,000 teeth. Much later, in 2014, another mandible was found in a cave in Yanliang, China. So far, almost 20 confirmed Gigantopithecus fossil sites have been identified in China and various spots within Southeast Asia. There have been several false alarms too, mainly because teeth and mandibles from extinct Chinese orangutans can be easily confused with those of Gigantopithecus. At first, the cave findings seemingly indicate that this was Gigantopithecus's preferred habitat, but the truth is a little different. It turns out that rodents like porcupines are big fans of gnawing on bones which are a good source of quill-growing nutrients. Porcupines dragged many bones, including those of Gigantopithecus, to their caves and underground burrows to gnaw in peace. They can gnaw bones completely, but they cannot get through the extra-hard enamel that protects the teeth. 
which explains why non-dental remains are hard to find. Despite the limited nature of the fossils, we can still learn when this animal lived. The oldest fossils date back 2.2 million years, while the most recent are around 215,000 years old. This means that Gigantopithecus walked the Earth from the early to middle Pleistocene. The teeth can also tell a story of the creature's diet, and the story is that it was most likely a generalist herbivore. In other words, it ate leaves, shoots, figs, fruits, seeds, roots, and possibly bark. The dense enamel is likely an adaptation to cope with tough or abrasive food items, like fibrous plants and solid tubers, as well as the dirt particles that cling to foods harvested from the ground. The strong jaw is also a solid sign that Gigantopithecus was used to eating tough plant matter, deep-rooted cheek teeth, molars, and molar-esque premolars look like the perfect tools for crushing and grinding a wide range of plant material. In the past, scientists also thought Gigantopithecus had meat-eating tendencies, mainly because of hoofed animal remains found in a cave fossil site. However, the structure of Gigantopithecus' teeth strongly argues against this theory, but you never know for 100% certain. Modern scientific techniques like carbon and oxygen isotope analysis have been a great help in confirming what the teeth suggest. The Gigantopithecus was a versatile herbivore that most likely favored low-lying fruits, figs, and shoots. Additionally, four teeth from Gigantopithecus had potentially grass-based pytholiths stuck to them, which suggests grasses may have been on the menu too. Pytholiths are basically super-rigid deposits found in some plants, and their rigidity allows them to stick around long after the plant itself has decomposed. So now that we've seen what Gigantopithecus ate, it's time to talk about where it lived. Obviously, the animal's preferred habitat would have been one that could support its herbivorous needs. Again, oxygen and carbon isotope analysis of the animal's temporal range comes in handy here. Using these tools, scientists have found that Gigantopithecus mainly lived in evergreen broadleaf forests with smaller populations living in true tropical rainforests. Birch and oak were the main plants in the evergreen forests, while both forest types were rich with ferns and low-lying herbs. It lived alongside a bunch of interesting animals, many of which are also long extinct, and some of which are still around today. Notable extinct animals are the elephant-like Cynomastodon, the hippo-like Hippopotamodon, the Cervivitis deer, and the Ilaropoda wulingshanensis panda. It also lived alongside tigers, leopards, doles, gaurs, rhinos, water buffalo, macaques, and boars, and a bunch of other creatures that still live in Asia today. It also lived alongside various types of orangutans, including the extinct Chinese species. Relations with other herbivores were likely peaceful for the most part, but that might depend on whether the Gigantopithecus had a predatory side. Carnivores like tigers and leopards were certainly enemies of Gigantopithecus, and these would have been major threats to the young. Naturally, parents would have been very protective when it came to these meat-eaters. Gigantopithecus's extinction is a bit of a mystery because of limited fossils. However, geologic and climate shifts could have resulted in the disappearance of much of the lush forest. More recent tooth fossils show that these animals were often malnourished, which could support the disappearing forest theory. Global cooling is another potential cause, as are humans. But again, we don't have much to go on since there's not much telling how these two factors would have affected them. Now it's time to talk about Gigantopithecus's ultimate claim to fame – size. Again, because of how big the teeth are, the general assumption is that the animal itself was huge. But it is important to remember that without a skeleton or a vertebra, any claims about Gigantopithecus size are just that assumptions and estimates. And boy have there been all kinds of estimates. The earliest widely accepted size estimate came from German anthropologist Franz Weidenreich in 1946, who also suggested that Gigantopithecus was an early human ancestor. According to him, the primate was at least twice the size of modern male gorillas. In the late 1950s, Chinese paleontologist Pei Wen Zhong proposed a height estimate of 12 feet. American paleontologists Elwin Simmons and Peter Edel argued that it was closer to 9 feet 
and weighed up to 600 pounds, which is one-third bigger than gorillas. More experts added their voices to the speculation over the decades. 14 feet tall, 16, 30 feet tall. It was endless. More respected voices did tend to get increasingly conservative with estimates, though. In 2017, Terry Harrison and Ying Ji Shang proposed a general weight range of 440 to 660 pounds. Sexual dimorphism was considered a near certainty since male primates are often larger than females. There were also debates about whether Gigantopithecus was fully bipedal or a knuckle walker. Early scientists were often excited about the prospect of a scientifically proven Bigfoot, so the bipedal reconstruction got a lot of the public limelight. However, arguments that Gigantopithecus was in fact a knuckle-walking ape, like gorillas and chimps, have been around since at least the 70s. As a result, recent reconstructions depict a massive orangutan-like beast with a steroid gorilla physique and dentition. Gigantopithecus vs. Gorilla Gorillas are the biggest and strongest primates today, but they typically prefer to be gentle giants within their ecosystems. Most squabbles occur within the troop, but these are often played out using vocalizations, posturing, and moderate wrestling. The truly violent clashes involve the silverback males, who have strong 3-inch fangs and even stronger arms, shoulders, chest, and backs built for war. Other big males are the main opponents in normal guerrilla politics, but as the leader of the troop, a silverback needs to watch out for leopards, snakes, chimps, and humans who may want to harm his family. They fight to the death if needed beating their chest and roaring along the way. Silverback battles can be extremely bloody affairs, and the throne is hard-earned. A gorilla can theoretically bench press at least 1,800 pounds if we're being generous. More adventurous estimates say that they can bench 4,500 pounds. The human record holder, Jimmy Kolb, can lift 1,401 pounds for the record. So, at 40% bigger than the average silverback, Gigantopithecus may have been at least 25% stronger, factoring in possible diminishing size-to-strength returns. Regardless, that means that the modern reconstruction of this ancient hominid would have been able to bench about 5,600 pounds. Simply incredible. But also a frightening prospect for any human who might come across one of these giants in the woods, especially when it was in a bad mood. Mathematically, it seems likely that a person's odds of surviving an attack from Gigantopithecus's bulk, power, and teeth would be significantly lower than their odds of surviving a serious gorilla assault, and that's pretty low. That said, we must always return to the reality that all we truly know about Gigantopithecus is its teeth and lower jaw. For all we know, it may have taken after post-canine megadontia primates like Paranthropus ethiopicus an early hominid ancestor from the late Pleistocene and early Pleistocene. These primates are also known for large jaws and teeth, but the rest of their skeletal remains show they were actually small-bodied. If Gigantopithecus was the same, then it would have been no threat to the gorilla's crown, and depending on how small it was, its name would become quite ironic. Time will tell, of course, but until then, feel free to speculate on what you think Gigantopithecus looked and lived like.